So NHL 24 is right around the corner. It's about two weeks away. And here are a bunch of features that I want to see in the game. Because let's face it, NHL 23 was a massive disappointment. This game just constantly missed throughout the entire year. There was a lot of things that this game didn't have that they definitely should have. And for franchise mode, I'm going to be going in depth here. Like there's a ton of things I want. And we're starting with player editing. Why can I not change the details of players? Like Robert Thomas, for example. Why can I not change him to a left winger? Why can I not change his secondary position to left wing? I know that doesn't make sense sense because he is a right winger but I want to change it to left winger why can I not do this in franchise mode like I don't understand what's stopping me also player type why can I not make him a playmaker like just small things like this I want to be able to adjust this like his contract for example I want to give him eight years of two million take away this contract extension I want to have him on the greatest deal possible why can I not edit this his height I want to make him 6'9 just cuz on top of that, the fact that I can't edit his attributes in franchise mode just makes no sense to me. Like, for example, if I want to make him a 99 overall, I can do that before I enter franchise mode. But the second you enter franchise mode, nope, you're not allowed to edit players whatsoever. But you know what? We'll let you change their X factors. You can do that. Do you want to equip an X factor to Robert Thomas? There you go. His ankle breaker now. I mean, that doesn't change anything. But the fact that I can do that, but I can't edit his attributes at all, I don't understand that. It's a small little feature you can add. It's not going to be breaking the game, but it's going give players more control over their franchise mode here's a great example of what full control of editing your players could do you have tage thompson here he has elite potential maybe i believe that tage thompson should have franchise potential maybe even high franchise potential well i would be able to go ahead and change that in franchise mode just because but no you can't do that because nhl 23 doesn't allow you to have full control of the editing i don't understand why that's a thing because it's not online it's an offline game mode so if it's offline i should be able to do whatever i want now the second feature i'm looking for is trade override why can i not override ride trades if i want to offer this to the edmonton oilers obviously they would say no to this but maybe i want them to say yes allow me to override the trade and bring in car mcdavid leon drysdale and ryan nugent hopkins it's an offline game mode it's meant for me to have fun let me have fun i remember in my younger days i'd be playing nba live 10 i would have lebron james kevin durant kobe bryant kevin garnett paul pierce on my team and you know how i was able to do that trade override obviously i was offering up like kendrick perkins for lebron james and they would accept that deal you know why trade override that's why they would accept that deal i would give myself the greatest team possible go 82 and 0 in the season but i would play every single game and have so much fun because i had lebron james kobe bryant kevin garnett as my team it was so easy, but yet it was so enjoyable because I mean, I'm a kid. Let me ball out here. Give me the best players imaginable. I'm going to continue talking about trades here, but we got to fix the trade logic. I'm going to offer a sixth and seventh rounder. And what am I going to be able to get here? A third rounder from the Boston Bruins. In what world is a sixth and seventh round pick going to get me a third rounder? And I know in some instances, I have been able to get second round picks for a seventh and a sixth explain that to me there is no team going to be accepting a sixth and a seventh round pick in exchange for a third why is this a thing and this isn't one of those things that just happens once in a while no i'm going to offer a sixth and a seventh rounder once again for the 2024 draft and i can guarantee you i can find another third rounder there we go but then when I offer two third rounders in a deal, what do I get? The exact same offer I would get for a sixth and a seventh. How does that make sense? Basically saying you can trade two picks in the 200th overall range for one pick that's in the 90 overall range. Why would somebody ever do that? So growing up, I used to play a lot of NBA 2K and my league specifically. But the one thing you can do in my league that you can't do in NHL is change teams during franchise mode. Maybe I want to start off as the Chicago Blackhawks, build them up to a dynasty, win them a Stanley Cup. And then after I do that, I want to go to the worst team in the entire league. So I'm going to go over to the worst team in the entire league, rebuild them, win them a Stanley Cup, and then change teams again. Then I'll go to the Montreal Canadiens. Hypothetically, they're the worst team in the entire league at this point. Rebuild them, win a Stanley Cup, move on to another team. Once you pick a team, you're stuck with them for 25 years. And then once the 25 years are up, thanks for playing, restart the franchise mode. As I've said multiple times in this video already, it's an offline game mode. Let me have absolute full control of what's going on. Like when it's an online game mode, I fully understand that you don't want them to have full control because i mean if you're playing against other players you can't have a 99 overall player going against like a 20 overall player that's just not fair but in an offline game mode where it's only me playing let me have absolute full control over what i'm doing and i want to just be able to build super teams let it happen now this next feature ties directly into roster sharing and i want to be able to import custom draft classes like hypothetically say i'm playing the 2001 2002 season somebody created that roster that's fantastic thanks for creating my man you did a great job here however that simulation then becomes very obsolete 
if in the upcoming draft we're going to see Connor Bedard. It's the 2001-2002 season and Connor Bedard is the next guy being drafted. Like how does that make sense? Allow me to import custom draft classes that people have created that will coincide with the season I'm in. So if I just finished up the 2002 season and I want to bring in the 2002 draft class, allow me to bring that in that somebody created. Or the next feature I want to see, historic draft classes. Give me the past 20 draft classes and allow me to import them. Now I understand that's a lot more difficult to do because you have to have the rights to a lot of the players but I don't need every single player. Give me the top 50 players or give me the top 100 players because more than likely there's a handful of those players still in the NHL. Like hypothetically, we bring in the 2015 draft class. I can guarantee you there's probably about 80 players from that 2015 draft class that have played significant time in the NHL. 80 players might be an over-exaggeration, but just hear me out for this example. Put those 80 players into a custom draft class, mix in some auto-generated players, and then allow me to use that draft class. But then for your custom league, you actually have the right draft classes associated with the years you're playing. The next thing I want to see is better simulation logic. I'm not sure if I've ever said this in a video, but the very first simulation I did on NHL 23, I simulated who was going to win the Stanley Cup. The Chicago Blackhawks won the Stanley Cup. The team that literally got the first overall pick and got Connor Bedard won the Stanley Cup in my first ever simulation. This was without Debrinkat. This was without Kirby Doc. This was without Dylan Strome. So all that was left was Jonathan Taves, Patrick Kane, Max Domi, and Seth Jones, I guess that team ended up winning the Stanley Cup. It makes no sense. And like a perfect example right here, Philly was nine and three. Why are the Philadelphia Flyers nine and three? Why are they seeing any type of success right now? This team was not good during the regular season. And everybody knew going in that the Philadelphia Flyers would not be a good team. Everyone knew the Chicago Blackhawks would not be a good team. But when I simulate, somehow they're finishing number one in the league and number six in the league. How are they top 10 teams? Everyone knows for a fact they're going to be bottom five. The next thing I want them to look into is line chemistry, because to me, this is a completely flawed system. Basically, X factors have such a big impact on the line chemistry that you can have guys here that have X's across the board, have zero line fit whatsoever, but you know what? They have X factors and those X factors work alongside the other X factors. So although you can't play on this line whatsoever and it makes no sense for you to play here, we're going to give you a plus three overall boost because you have X factors. What does X factors have to do with the simulation? When you're actually playing the games, yes, I understand why you want them having an impact and giving the line boost. Like I understand why X factors have an impact, but explain this to me. Busnevich, he's a playmaker. I put him alongside a two-way forward and another playmaker so there's no sniper on this line and we're getting a plus one overall boost who's a sniper on this team Verana. i move Verana up to the first line now we don't have the plus one overall boost but yet busnevich and Verana, they have the exact same line fit but because busnevich has his x factors they get the plus one overall fit. Why is that a thing? Vran is a sniper. You want to put a sniper alongside a playmaker, but since the sniper doesn't have X factors, no, you don't want to do that. Make sure he's on the second line so he's not getting first line minutes and you don't get that plus one overall boost. There's also a lot of small things that they should be adding. Like, I mean, no trade clauses, no movement clauses. These have been in the NHL for years now, but yet they haven't been implemented in the game. The other thing they should be adding is protection on picks. Like this Florida pick right here, it's a first round pick, top 10 protected. But in NHL 23, it's just a first round pick there's no protection on it whatsoever so montreal if this becomes the first overall pick then you're getting Connor bedard with it although you shouldn't be it doesn't have protection on it so you can do what you want now the final feature i want to see in nhl 24 because this was the thing that probably annoyed me the most throughout all of nhl 23 for a lot of the videos i did i had to use custom leagues so i would have to go through this entire process right here so hypothetically just say we're going to run 32 teams right why do i have to rename all these back to the western conference eastern conference and then rename every division Division. Why is it not named already for me? All the divisions are perfectly lined up, like everyone's in the correct division. But for some reason, because it's a custom league, for some reason, I got to rename this the Western Conference Pacific Division, Central Division, and then Eastern Conference, Atlantic Division, Metro Division. I know it's something really small, but I hate having to go through this. And then say, hypothetically, let's just say I'd rename this. Oh, it's Custom Division Zero. This one's Custom Division. 3.5 whatever and then say you know what i want to substitute a team so we'll go to substitute a team actually you know what i changed my mind i don't want to substitute a team in oh now you have to rename the division again because since i was going to substitute a team it deletes the name of the division and you know what let's make this more inconvenient for people that want to play this game we're going to add two more teams to the league you know what let's spice it up let's get crazy we got two new teams in the nhl 
I don't care what the teams are. Oh, you're going to tell me we're going to completely randomize the divisions now. So maybe I just wanted to add one team to the Pacific division and one team to the Metro. Now I have to go back and move all these teams to the right division and the right conference, rename the divisions and rename the conferences. And then hopefully while I was doing all this, I remember to substitute the teams beforehand because if I didn't substitute the teams beforehand, oh, I want to put this team in the league now. Oh, guess what? It's going to re-randomize everything. And then you have to go and move things again. Like, oh, I'm going to put this team over here. This team's going over here. Vegas, you're going over here. And then St. Louis, you know what? You're going to go switch with Anaheim. And then you know what? I want the Arizona Coyotes because I hate the Arizona Coyotes. I'm going to substitute this team in now. Now all these teams are back in different divisions and different conferences. And then I got to remove everything again. This is just a quality of life issue where it's like, this doesn't have to be an actual thing. Have this called the Western Conference, Atlantic Division, Central Division. And then if I want to change the division names and move all the teams around afterwards, then that's cool. Let me do that, but don't do it for me. But anyway, that's just a few things I want fixed with franchise mode. NHL 24, it's around the corner. I'm going to tell you guys right now, I'm done uploading NHL 23 content. I cannot force myself to play this game anymore. It's two weeks till the next game drops. I'm going to be uploading NHL 24 videos and all that. Things I want to see. Maybe do a couple reactions and all that. But until then, yeah, I'm done playing NHL 23. NHL 24 better be a good game.